You're welcome back uh, to the run-up. We're being joined by Mr. Theophilos Akatuba. And what our concern is, is that the collection of permanent voter cards, PVC, has begun. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, last Monday commenced the distribution of the all-important PVCs at its local government offices nationwide. The commission had announced that Nigerians can now obtain their cards between the 12th of December and 22nd of January 2023. The Commission also resolved to devolve PVC collection to the 8,809 registration areas and wards from 6th of January to 15th of January 2023, that's from tomorrow to the 15th of January. And media reports so far indicate that the collection process has been anything but smooth. Just like the registration process, the collection exercise has been a crowded experience. Uh, I did say that we have been joined by Mr. Theophilos Akatuba. Mr. Akatuba, good morning and welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning. Um, Happy New Year to you, Yango. Good to be with you on Plus TV Africa. Same to you, Mr. Akatuba. We're hoping to be joined also by Mr. Phil Badong, coordinator and founder of Kaduna PVC Hangout. I don't know if he's here available already. If you're here, good morning and welcome. Okay, Mr. Phil will be joining us um, a little bit later. So, Mr. Katuba, we were told, even as at yesterday, the figure of uncollected PVCs still stands at, or still stood at, 6.7 million uh, PVCs. That's a whole lot of uh, PVCs not collected. So, this low turnout and the hitches trailing the collection of PVCs in Lagos and beyond, uh, how is it going to affect the... Um, 2023 election? Well, obviously, uh, if you don't have uh, a lot of PVCs uh, that are collected, it means that um, the voter turnout will be affected. It will immediately tell you that there will be uh, a relatively low voter turnout. And so there is a need for people to collect their PVCs. And so the INEC is bringing out these uh, records and this report for those who have not collected their PVCs to do so because there is a direct relationship between collected PVCs and the number of people that are, uh, are, are qualified to cast their votes. Uh, it would be a waste of time uh, to ask pe people to come out and vote if they do not have their PVC. So PVC collection is sacrosanct. It's very, very critical. Uh, to the level of participation of citizens in the electoral process. And it is, in fact, one of the most important tools that the voter need uh, to participate in the vote. It's not enough to agitate. It's not enough uh, to be on social media and begin to call for or support a candidate without you having your PVC. So those who have not collected their PVCs, this is the time to go because without the PVCs, you cannot cast your vote, and then the turnout will be low, and then candidates that are not supposed to win are likely to win, especially those you do not want to win, because it is your vote that will bring victory to your candidate. So it's very important. It has a lot of effect. And again, uh, a low voter turnout sends a signal of apathy and disinterest of citizens in the process of governance of their country. And to that extent, it also has an effect on the legitimacy of the elected uh, leader. Because if you have a population of, say, 20 million voters, and uh, the election that brings victory to a candidate is less than 2.5 million or 3 million, it sends a, a kind of message of illegitimacy because you are representing a small fraction of the voting population. So it's very important that everyone goes to get their PVCs, very important. Okay, but the, the question here is that, um, or, or the concern is that, it's likely that the people who have not collected their PVCs uh, might just be those who registered um, newly. The old voters still have their PVCs and possibly can use these PVCs. So, are we now saying that, uh, if, if that is the case, are we now saying that, um, Every voter or every person that has been voting before, uh, that has been putting whoever 
has been put in, in, in the place of authority has not had any change of heart whatsoever uh, to make a, a difference in the forthcoming election. Let, let me explain this. Now, if 100 people were turning out to vote in those days and getting someone into that place, do you think the voter education now, the awareness, the level of awareness of, uh, of, of the electoral process and the, the confidence that Beavers, for instance, has put in the minds of the people, it, will that be enough to make the electoral process this time have a different outlook? Or is it going to be business as usual if the new people who registered do not go get their PVCs? Will there ever be a difference? All right, thank you. Uh, in the past, elections are determined by most times the total number of registered voters in an area. And then it didn't have any correlation with those who presented themselves for accreditation. Mm. Most times, politicians in their localities award the votes to themselves. Once they look at the register, they're able to determine that, okay, we have 10,000 registered voters in this polling unit or polling area. Uh, we are giving to party A, 6,000. Based on settlement and all the agents, they connive with the highest bidder and award the votes to that person. And then they do the thumb printing to correlate. That has been a common practice. Yeah. Before then, when the card reader also came, you also had the same situation where you have incident forms. And so what we thought we escaped from, they did it even more. In many riverine areas of my state, Delta, for example, it is common knowledge that votes are located without the voter being present. Mm. Now, it is practically impossible for you to do that. Because the voter must present himself. He must be electronically accredited by biometric and facial features, or facial features, with a machine that transmits that accreditation to a database outside of that area, which can no longer be altered. And then the outcome of the election, the actual vote cast, must tally with the, with the accredited voters. So that is why if you, if politicians think that they can dissuade the people from collecting their PVCs and therefore later award votes to themselves, they'll be wasting their time. So too with those people who have been buying or taking PVCs from voters mm. or buying their PVCs in order to make sure they either do not vote or on the day of election they are, they are asked to queue up for their voter card and they are given money to influence their direction of vote. All of these have become even more difficult. So collecting your PVC is actually something that is the completion of your voter registration process. You cannot say, I am a voter, when you have no PVC. Even if your name is in the voter registration, uh, the voter register, without that PVC presented, you will not be able to vote because it is required for your accreditation process to complete. So I implore all Nigerians, especially the new ones that registered recently, the zest with which they did the registration, I'm sure they should go and complete the process by picking up their PVC. I picked up my PVC in the Keja local government area. I used to vote somewhere around um, in a gig. I used to live somewhere in New Dairy Farm Estate. And my voter place was some primary school around the Agege area. So I moved away from that area and I, I had to transfer my vote. And my new vote, uh, PVC was given to me at uh, Ikeja uh, INEC office, Ikeja local government INEC office. Initially, I went to the local government of Ikeja and I, a sign was placed there that uh, the INEC people have moved to uh, Muis Banire around the GRO area. I had to go there. And I took my time, spent the time, waited on the, in the queue. And uh, so many people were restless as usual. And I was playing the role of a pacifier, educating them to be calm, that every process is painstaking. So I got my PVC and I'm ready.
to cast my vote on election day. Without that, you won't be able to cast your vote. You won't be able to actualize your dream of the candidate you want to govern Nigeria or to rule, govern your state, be in the assembly. You will simply be someone who has a desire that you cannot implement. There was low turnout, he cheese uh, that trailed collection of PVCs in Lagos. There was a, a impasse of Lagos yesterday, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, commenced distribution of permanent voters' cards, PVCs, to voters. Uh, report has it that the flag of, of the collection yesterday was trailed by low turnout of people in some of the local governments visited. And in some local governments, many people that turned up to pick their PVCs expressed disappointment that their cards were not available. At Agege local government, it was reported that most people that came couldn't get their PVCs and they were asked to come back next week. And that's how the story has been. INEC is decrying the low collection of PVCs in Bornu, in Kogi as well. They are decrying the uh, low collection of PVCs, uh, same as in Delta and in Benue State and so many other parts of the, the country. But for us to be sure that um, the we are not just crying wolf. The people who are complaining about inability to collect PVCs are not just crying wolf. What, what amount of time do you need to spend? Like you gave the example that you went yesterday and you had to go to another place and you were a pacifier. But people were restless. Those were the, your words. How much is someone likely to wait on a queue before you can get this PVC? So, so that we, we get to know which part is the fault of INEC and which part is the fault of the people? Well, I believe that um, INEC has a huge, uh, they've been doing a lot of work. The work they do is really, really tedious. I was rest until when I got in there to pick my car and I saw the process the documents that I need to sign, the process of ensuring the card is given to the right person. That process alone, for only me, if you multiply it by the number of people they will be attending to in one day, that will tell you the, how long it takes to be paid, how long it takes for them to deliver a card. Whether the process is right or wrong, my call is that INEC will need to do a lot of consistent orientation continuous conversation. For example, when the registration area, uh, the card collection was moved from the local government headquarter in Ikeja, there was not enough information either on the social media or INEC handles for people to know that quickly. That I think is discouraging and INEC should do a lot more in, in consistent because the current generation is a very mobile generation. They are not stagnant in one place. It's not in the, those days that you can catch them on television. You've got to use all of the channels of communication to reach the people. Because for if you look at Lagos State, for example, Lagos has 1.6 million card uncollected. And there are another category of people whose cards are not ready, but they do not have that information. So you see a lot of people coming in and they say, okay, your own card, is not ready. Your card will be so. We need to know whose cards are ready and which batches are not ready, so that people do not go there, get discouraged. Some people whose whose cards are there now might have visited the place once or twice, and they were told their cards were not ready there, and they are not they are no longer having the space of time to go and collect. Other people too have tra traveled because the time this collection started is close to the festive period. Many young people could have either traveled or relocated, or many voters have traveled out to their hometown. Some have gone for religious activities. Some have gone to their religious camp. I believe, hopefully, that uh, as soon as the year starts and the business activities start next week, we'll see an upsurge of collection of these cards. I believe so. Okay, uh, we, we are being joined finally by uh, Mr. Phil Badong, coordinator and founder of Kaduna PVC Hangout. Mr. Badong, welcome to the sh show. Thank you, thank you so much. It's okay, you are coordinator and founder of Kaduna PVC Hangout. Tell us the scenario playing out in Kaduna, for instance, uh, regarding PVC collection and all. 
Um, so we have been we are currently planning a TVC collection drive actually, but for the collection in Kaduna State in general, it's it's really going on. Um, the we have we have experienced a few challenges because, like I said, we try we are planning to embark on a PVC collection drive because we've already done the PVC registration drive, and one of the challenges we encounter is that um, is distance. A lot of people complain about the distance. You know, um, every local government has just one INEC office in the local government, and then. One local government has about 12 wards and it's that big and that large. And those 12 wards are like a long distance apart from the center where the PBC, where the um, INEC office is. So we've been trying to find ways to mitigate because that has been like the primary, um, the primary challenge for people collecting their PBCs. And um, we also, we also try to mitigate that, and we also got an information actually that um, the INEC office are going to be sending um, the cards, the registered cards. Oh, we seem to have lost uh, we the have audio. A challenge. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Bedon. All right, all right. So I said that will ease the um, distributing the cards to different words will ease the the distance challenge that a lot of people have been complaining about. But yet still, if that can be achieved, we are, we are going to know that it's, it's going to commence next week. Between next week, they are going to do that. So if that can be, that can be achieved, it can go a long way to enable people get their, um, their PVCs. Because a lot of people are busy, a lot of people work, and the INEC office have staff as well, and the staff work. The staff have their um, working hours and their working hours is almost the same or the same time with the working hours of um, the people that want to collect their cards. So if they can share these um, cards to the different worlds, it's, it brings the um, the collection closer to the people. And I feel like that will that will um, that will enable an easier access of collection for the PVCs. But generally, I would say the same challenge everywhere. A lot of people are reluctant, but we just keep pushing and, you know, sending out the message as much as we can for people to get their votes as well. Oh, okay, let me <clears throat> let me go to where I should have gone first anyway. Um, P Kaduna PVC Hangout. What do, does that really mean? What do you do? When I finish the interview, I'll give you. Oh, God. I do not think this hand out. Basically, what we did was uh, we found uh, um, something that uh, me and my friends we came together to do. We saw something similar going on in Lagos and the two states at the time. So I just made a tweet and I'm like, oh, we should do something like this in Kaduna. And um, I spoke to one of my friends, Ayobami Bolorundi, and um, we came up with a strategy and we came up with, you know, an idea. And then we put it out on our socials that we are um, looking for team members, we're looking for volunteers, actually. And then we got volunteers, we did the first outreach, and then along the line, we got donations from individuals and organizations. And then we partnered with the Kaduna, with the... Um, Global Shippers Organization, the Kaduna branch, the Kaduna Shippers Corp, and we partnered with them and we continue. Overall, we had about 30 locations, we went to different locations, we went to about 30 different locations, and in total, individually and collectively as a team or as a group, we were able to attend to about 5,000 people in Kaduna State. And so what we're doing, we're doing pre-registration, we were doing... Um, transfer and um, updates of information, change of pooling units, all those things that could be done on the INEC website. And then we created both SMSs to follow up to people and ensure that they see through to the biometric process. And then on one or two occasions, we were able to work with INEC officials and we brought them to a certain location to do the biometrics capturing for them. And since then we have, after the registration was over, 
We have not really done anything until now that we are planning a PVC collection drive. Okay. Uh, Mr. Akatuba, let me come to you. Um, if you're there, you said the process is uh, a little bit um, uh, tiring as it is. Uh, you need a lot of patience to do what you need to do. And you talked about information. If you were to advise the INEC, what things do you think they could do from now to 22nd of January where the PVC collection will be, will be ending uh, to make the process more seamless than what you found yourself and other people in Lagos and beyond find themselves? Uh, well, my first advice is, is voter education. They must step up. They must use various languages. They must use all the channels that, are, that can be utilized. They must, if they didn't have the budget, they've got to look for that money because you can't really mobilize people if they are not well informed about what you are doing. Uh, because if 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 the time that I went to the INEC office to pick at the Ikeja local government head office, if they informed me that they have moved the address, uh, the location, they moved to their own site at the GRE, I'm sure the time and the resources I spent to go there would have been saved. And then the uh, the annoyance, my my having to travel to a new area, would have uh, been uh, would have been completely eliminated, and I would have gone there with a very uh, a more relaxed mind to be able to wait for them. So this type of uh, annoyance and um, lack of public information and mass mobilization can affect even the collection of the PVTs. For example. During the registration, some people did their capture in a different local government other than where they reside. I think because of the ability uh, to register online, a lot of people were registered while they were in the marketplace or somewhere in the Keja, whereas they live around Alimosho. And I saw people who came there and they were told that their collection center is at Alimosho. It was really annoying and discouraging to them. In fact, as usual, they express their anger the way the common, the ordinary Nigerians would show disappointment and blame INEC for inefficiency. But I say so because of lack of information. On the other hand, in terms of the internal processes, I do not see much that they can do. The only thing they can do is to increase the number of people that attend to those who come to collect the cards. But do they have the budget for this? Is another matter. So you see, my advice is if they can look for some more ad hoc staff so that the process of collection will be a bit seamless and those who can come there spend one hour, two hours, or less than one hour, they picked up their card, it will encourage more people because some people now are looking for the right time, the auspicious time to be able to go because of the experience of what they had for all those who have gone there to collect. I think that day I spent about two to three hours, which I think was too much for the collection of the PVC. Because if, at the end of the day, if you don't collect it because of two hours, uh, the regret might be more than two hours or two years or two tenors. So I hope it is worth it. I'll come back to you, Mr. Katuba, for one final question. But let me go to uh, Mr. Badong right now. Phil, um, uh, w when you talk about this, your, your, your organization, the uh, Kaduna PVC Hangout, and what you do, you interact a lot with the people who are supposed to collect the PVCs, who are supposed to vote, and who are supposed to do the needful to make sure we install whoever we want as individuals or as citizens uh, come um, February 25. But what is your level of interaction with INEC like? How do you, how do you relate with INEC to make your job, uh, your job and their job uh, a little bit easier? Okay, um, we, I personally, I, I got, I had to get in touch with someone that works in INEC because at the beginning, I think one of our, at our first two or three hour switches, we had um, a breach of communication. So I had to get a direct contact because as I then we're working on them, see them, see someone will come and see, oh, they see that INEC is doing this or they see that INEC is doing that and then people were misinformed. So eventually we got, I have about two or three INEC staff on speed down and a couple of my team members have INEC staff 
I I next staff, sorry, I next staff, sorry, that are on their um that they are in contact with. So basically, we just reach out to them to establish um the perfect information, you know, the to to understand what people are supposed to do and how we can help them do it. And um fortunately for us, or luckily for us, we go we, we got um we got we commended our efforts were commended by the INEX staff. We said that we made their work easier because we're passing on information to people. Um a lot of times someone might come in and their PVC is probably misplaced and they will now want to um apply for a new one. Meanwhile you can just apply for loss or damage on the website. So when you apply for a new PVC, the um, there is going to be an issue when you go for your biometrics because your biometrics have been captured before. So that is just um, an example of a couple of the um, other challenges that we experienced during the PVC outreach that we had. We're still here and talking about um... Uh, the low tur turnout of people to collect PVCs and uh, the, the low collection generally of PVCs because as of yesterday it was still in the news that 6.7 million PVCs have not been collected and how do we go into an election especially in a, an election that the bulk of the people that have registered do not even vote but now that people seem to ha be more aware and more excited what is happening to the, the collection of the PVCs. We're trying to see if there are challenges and if they can also be corrected. We've been talking with Mr. Theophilos Akatuba, a media consultant and public affairs analyst, and also with uh, Mr. Phil Badung, coordinator and founder of Kaduna PVC Hangout. Uh, let, me, let me start with you, Mr. Phil, before I go to Mr. Akatuba, because we are going to digress a little bit, but still on uh, INEC and the election. Uh, Mr. Phil, what are your expectations for 2023 general election? Because you've been involved in this, I'm sure, not in the, in the past, but right now, because of this election, in the next election you are so involved, what are your expectations uh, of the 2023 election? Peaceful, good turnout, uh, awareness, everything you want to talk about. To be honest, I, I, I have a lot of expectations, but at the same time, I also, um, I'm also aware of the fact that um, anything can happen. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think this um, election might be all that peaceful. And that is just me. I'm not trying to be pessimistic or anything, but that's just me from the, from the reality of what we see presently. It doesn't look like it's going to be a a you know very peaceful election because especially in the north you know where um there is a majority party in almost every northern state and rather this is one of the, this is like one of the first elections in recent times where they are where we have like um three major political parties or three major um, contestants. You know, previously, it's always two. It's always a battle between, most times for the presidential election, it's mostly always a battle between the, um, pardon me, it's mostly a battle between the APC and the PDP. And then this time around, we have the Labour Party. So I really expect that um, people will turn out, especially youths, and young people, people that are voting for the first time, because one of the things um, we encountered during the PVC hangout was a lot of shock. Because I mean, it's, it's understandable if someone who is 25 or below 30 is, you know, registering to vote for the first time. But when you meet people that are 30 plus in their 40s, approaching 50s, and did not voted before, it's it, it's it's quite um questionable and it's quite I would say sad to an extent. But um overall I feel like um people are going to turn out. But we can't really say due to because presently we're talking about low collection of PVCs. But hopefully in the next one or two weeks we can or will try to be able to mitigate that. I feel like another way to mitigate it is is if um 
Because I know that for in Cardinal State, for example, um, the state government gave a two-day break, a two-day break for state workers sometime last year for um, PVC registration. So I feel like if they can replicate that again for PVC collection this time around, and if it can be done in every other state, that will um, actually aid this PVC collection that we're talking about. But um, overall, I, I think that, um, yeah, people will turn out, and I'm expecting the youth to turn out as well. And it will be very important if we have a peaceful election, but um, from the look of things, in some regions, ah, it might not be so peaceful. But overall, it's just, I expect, um, one of the things I really look forward to is um, resilience. Resilience because one thing I know a lot of people um, battle with during election season is um, the challenges and the struggles of voting, you know. Um, sometimes you go under the sun for hours, so people will stay two hours, they've not voted, I'm going home, you know. Sometimes they can come, the ad hoc staff will like shift, you know, adjust, stay on a street file, and people will just be like, ah, I'm going home. So this time around, I expect to see um, resilience because already there is already a mindset among young people that whatever will happen, whatever may happen, anything, anyhow, anyhow is going to be, we are still going to ensure we, um, we vote at the end of the day. So if it takes you one hour, two hours, four hours, five hours, ten hours, if it takes you the whole day, I expect um, citizens to have resilience and just make sure that they get what they come to the polling units for. Okay, um, we will come back to you for, because you just finished almost with um, something of uh, security. Uh, we'll come back to find out how it is and how it might affect the election next year, but, or this year, sorry. Uh, but let me go to Mr. Katuba. A little bit of digression here. On the news, we have heard that some people went to court asking that the INEC chairman be sacked, and not only should he be sacked, but he should be barred from holding any position for the next 10 years. I just want to have what your take on that scenario uh, is. How do you think, or what do you think about it generally, before we begin to feel about if they were to succeed, how it could have impacted the 2023 election? Yeah, um, it would have impacted it very negatively and immediately damage the credibility of the election. And then it might even have the effect of um, affecting the schedule of the election. Therefore, they would have uh, thrown spanners in the works of the nation in its democratic journey. Uh, make no mistake, even in God's kingdom, the influence of evil came upon Lucifer. And he was able to take a stand against God. So we as a people must know that um, we have evil people in our midst who on a daily basis are scheming evil. In fact, we have people that are evil personified. And they, there's a lot of people with bloods on their hands. And they are all part of us. And they are all part of the, the democratic. They are, some of them can even be contestants. Knowing full well now that they have, they will lose. There are many people who are contesting who have no hope of winning. And a majority of such people who do not have another motivation for contesting will want to damage the electoral process so that their complete uh, humiliation at the, at the polls will not, will not be recorded or will not happen. So we, we, we are grateful to the court for being smart. Because as it is right now, uh, if you can incapacitate the INEC chairman, then you immediately you throw uh, chains in the legs of INEC in his ability to conduct the election. So we, I believe that um, we are maturing and our courts are becoming wiser. If you remember, we've seen things like this in the past in various shapes and colors. And as we make progress as a nation, the bad ones, we should be able to distance them from our national life. We are happy, I'm happy when I heard the news. I didn't even know, you know, you. we heard that there are people, fifth columnists that are working against the elect. We've heard alarm by 
the CUP, is it coalition of, uh, of political parties. They have also raised that now because various people are in various courts attempting to do something tricky and funny. But smart judges are wise and they see that these are phantom allegations upon which an order cannot be granted. And so I, I'm happy for Nigeria. I'm happy for the government whose image will be smeared if anything untoward happened to the electoral timetable and schedule. Buhari will be blamed that his men have attempted to perpetuate him in office. There's so many things, but we should be happy for our nation because the world is watching, world is watching and they are taking note of how we are progressing and how we are moving. Watching, and that gives us a lot of concern because a few days ago, it was the central bank governor that people were attempting to, even the DSS, not just people, but the DSS, which is also an instrument of government, was trying to get arrested, that he was a, 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 a financier of, uh, of, uh, of, of bandits and uh, terrorists and all that. And, you know, some people, let's say, um, had a theory that the governor of the central bank came up with policies that are biting, very biting on the politicians. And suddenly they found out he was, he was sponsoring terrorists. Now, the, the INEC chairman brought Bivas and has refused to make Bivas a second kind of option, that it must happen, that Vivas will be used in the elections, and suddenly they have found out that he did not declare his assets well. When the international community watches us, when they look at us, what will they think of Nigeria? It, it begs the question how m politically mature or how patriotic a country or its people are by just finding faults in the instruments that are supposedly trying to make the policy better. How does that speak to our image uh, outside? Uh, any of such development does not promote the country. It makes the country look like a place that, that is not civilized, a place that you cannot relate with if you have many of such people in our system. Uh, but we must understand that there is no system and there is no country where there are no evil ones. What the good people do is to isolate them, expose them, and treat them. You heard of the cryptocurrency collapse, the crypto exchange. You heard of bank fraud, even internationally. There is always going to be a wicked one in the midst of good people. The good ones must be consulted in ensuring that such bad people are removed. So the judge have seen through their, their mischief and has stopped them. The same thing with the DSS. The DSS is being used by the enemies in our midst also. They have seen that this attempt by the CBN governor to change the currency and has also restrict and they place a cap on the amount of cash that can be available. Politicians who have never won election will never be happy because they know that every victory they have had have been bought and they believe the future is available for them to keep buying. That's the reason they amassed the wealth they amassed in the first place, to distort the outcome of election in their favor. So they went all out to get the the CBN governor with phantom accusation because the DSS must, must investigate allegations, especially when it comes with national security. So they would have cooked up all the stories and presented this before the DSS, and the DSS, as usual, want to do its job. Thank God again, a court has stopped the DSS because they can see through the maze. Mm -hmm. So let us, I believe that uh, this is dangerous, not good for our image, and but we continue to fight until even the international community will know that this country is making a lot of effort to weed out the wicked ones in their midst. If that is, if that is consistent, the confidence of the international community will grow again, will improve in favor of Nigeria. Mm. Nigeria.
I, I like that. I like that. What is intended to be something to dampen our image or, or to spoil our image, to dampen our spirit, will now turn out to be good. I like the way you put it. But uh, Phil, let me come to you. Another worrisome thing when we're thinking about the 2023 election is security. And Kaduna is one of these places that is so volatile. And you made mention of security maybe being an impediment in the 2023 election. Walk us through the uh, security situation right now in Kaduna and how you think that will lead to 2023 general election, how, how it can impact on the 2023 general election if it is or it will remain in this way at that time. All right. Um, for the insecurities in um, Kaduna State, it's, um, it's a very um, contextually nuanced conversation because we have the Kaduna Central, we have the Kaduna North, and we have the Southern Kaduna. And um, the insecurities majorly have been tilted towards the Southern Kaduna, and you know, it's left out of Kaduna Central and um, Kaduna North. So for the Southern part of Kaduna, um, honestly, from the look of things, insecurity is going to pose a major, a major threat to um, elections. And um, it's terrible because I don't even think the media is reporting reporting it as much as it is because now um, Kaduna Central is surrounded with IDP camps. There are a lot of IDP camps because people are being displaced from their homes. If we've had a lot of mass burials, even in my uh, my village, because I'm from Southern Kaduna as well, but I reside at Kaduna Central. You know, we've had a lot of mass burials, mass funerals. It's it's crazy, honestly. I won't I won't lie, and it's going to really take a lot for elections to actually hold in those areas, because or rather for election for peaceful elections to hold in those areas, because. As of now, it's like it's somewhat like an ethnic cleansing, and a lot of people have been displaced from their homes. And I don't even think any staff, any of um, the INEC ad hoc ad hoc staff, will pray or will want to go there to work because it's a very um, volatile environment. So um, it's it, it's a lot, honestly. It's it's not something I can say much about, but. The security situation in Kaduna State as of now is is very is very terrible because even in the city in the Kaduna Central, I mean like obviously we do not have um, bandits, but you know um, kidnappings and robberies and all still thrive in some areas, and it it's it's really it's really crazy honestly I. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot. Okay, but is there something? Because from now, today is fifth. We have like uh, 45 days or more uh, or so. We have, we have a, a more than a month to the election. Are there some things that can be done between now and then to improve the security situation? Honestly, I feel like um, if anything can be done, it's going to be it's going to take a lot of work. So we can we can we can we can start and hope to finish before then. Because um, I mean, like the um, military bases have been attacked. You know, it's almost like nowhere is safe. On that side of town, so it's it's going to take a lot. However, I feel like um, if we um, employ uh, if the state if the state government can employ um, security agencies, that will go a long way. That will really really go a long way because they can um, help curb you know the 
insecurities and um, if not it's not just even employing them or deploying them to those areas it's, or to those areas but it's to equip them i mean um you could see i don't know if you've got to see that but the last attack or one of the recent attacks at um kaburu in color local government of kajuna state when you see the bullet shells that were left after the attack you could see that these people have um very sophisticated weapons so it's not just about deploying security oper operators or security officers but then to um equip them to be able to fight back in case of you know confront confrontation with with the um with the terrorists okay. so that aside i don't i don't think there is anything that can be more than that because people have taken all the safety precautions you know all the safety measures that you can take as as a human being you know but then there is just so much that we can do in a large state so that can only be the solution honestly okay mr kachuga let me come to you um for just a final thing um uh, your projections for 2023 uh because of these uh PVC collection and all the other things that are surrounding this election of 2023, what are your projections like? Where will it go to? Who will have the more, most votes? And who do you think it might favor uh, in these situations? And then you throw in also a word of advice to Nigerians who are waiting patiently for 2023, just to wrap up. Well, um, it will be difficult to to say who it will favor. But what I can say, as uh, because of the poor, uh, the fact that there are uncollected PVCs in some very large number, like 6.7 million, uh, the question is uh, which of these political parties will this be disadvantaged? And uh, are, they, are they doing enough of mobilizing their people? Mm. And so we do not know exactly how that will play out. But, as it is, if you look at the collection of the, the non, in metropolitan areas, areas like Lagos, Abuja, and many centers, I've just lost my electricity. I hope uh, I'm yeah. still able to be seen. It's fine. Yeah. So uh, in, in many areas, I am suspecting that Peter B seems to be trending in metropolitan areas. Mm. And it appears that not collection of PVC is higher in these areas. If any obedient is listening, this is the time to get busy to, to ask more of the people in the urban areas who are a lot more obedient, you know, in, in my assessment. Then, uh, but in the rural areas, in far north, there's a high number of collection. If you look at the records that have been presented, in Southwest, there's too many people not, or your state is having 700 uncollected PVCs. But the consolation is this. A lot of the PVCs that are not being collected are old PVCs from 2019. That means many voters at that time, when they were not, a lot of those people are not real voters. They were double, I don't know whether they were double, or they were people that were boxed or ferried in to register with the hope of coming to vote in voting time. I do not know what they are, but a lot of the many of the new registrations, they are collecting their PVCs. They are anxious to collect, but you will still have a backlog of those old registrations. So for me, I will always say that um, People should be vigilant and uh, people should make sure they, they get involved, they vote, but I will not be able to say on television who I think it will favor. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Akatuba. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you to talk about this and we hope our Nigeria will go higher and higher and not go back to the olden days. Thank you to you, Mr. Uh, Phil. Uh, Badong, the coordinator and founder of Kaduna PVC Hangout. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Pleasure. And, and Mr. Theophilos Akatuba, a media consultant and a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. It's been a pleasure being with you, Yango. Take care.
Okay, we'll go now and take the news, and then when we return, we just say our goodbyes, and that'll be it. Stay with us. Thank you.